Hey there, thank you so much for clicking to this video. By the way, before we get to the video, this is my fourth time trying to film this video. I have filmed this video four times already and already scrapped those four versions just because I didn't really know if I should make this, but I figured I would just make it and just put it out there. I mean, what do I stand to lose? Anyways, before we go into the video, I would like to preface this by saying this is like my first ever coding video. I'm by no means a programming expert. I'm by no means a software engineer. I do not have a computer science background, so I'm very new to this. I've only been learning and working with python for a couple of months now so i'm not the best at this i'm only coming from this with the angle of someone who's new to this trying to share what i'm learning in a way that is understandable to myself and people who might also want to learn from someone like me and to add to that this is not a tutorial by any means this is again a means by which i'm sharing what i've learned what i'm learning and revising the fundamentals because over the course of my career i've always found that anything that i know how to teach and share are things that i actually understand very well so with that being said and all of that out of the way so this video is going to be about python basics for cybersecurity and everything else from a beginner how to put that out there but yeah with that being said let's actually get into the video and go over the basics and real quick if you stay till the end of the video i will actually be pointing you to the resource that i've been using to learn all these things over the last couple of months so stay tuned for that all right so here we go i am in my local jupyter workspace uh, which has been hosted on my macbook i'm deliberately not using vs code or any sort of like ide because uh, i really want to get familiar with jupyter notebooks and also just you know not really care much about like all this fancy extra stuff until later on as i really want to ingrain the skills of the basics and syntax and all those things uh, without the extra stuff so i'm using jupyter notebooks i'm also learning python as a means to understand more about script automation scripting automation but also machine learning and a lot of machine learning stuff is done uh, typically using uh, jupyter notebooks so that being said i'm gonna go ahead and create a new notebook and right here i'm going to actually delete this old one and rename this uh I'm just gonna rename this demo just gonna like youtube demo all right perfect then we already have a nice cell here created for us all right so let's actually just go ahead and get the very basics down uh with our very first print statement print basically just as the name implies prints whatever is within these parentheses uh for the user or whoever we're dealing with or whatever program we're dealing with so we can say print hello world which is typically your first program and boom you have hello world it's very simple whatever you put within the print statement of course it could be a string it could be some other sort of value print essentially just surfaces it uh for you and that's essentially a, a print statement now before we go into all this stuff let's actually go over commenting so commenting just basically allows you to add some sort of notes and essentially just annotate things within your python code without you worrying about python trying to run it python essentially just ignores the comment so for example we could have this is a sample program and boom python doesn't run it and the way we specify a comment is using this pound sign so anything that we have within a pound sign is going to not run right so comments just basically allow you to run your programs and add stuff like this into it so this is a simple program i'm just going to change this to hello world because that case is bothering me and there we go and we have our first program now let's talk about numbers and math i'm not the best at math i'm by no means a mathematician part of the reasons why i didn't get a computer science degree but python on the other hand is great at math it's like very good at it it has the ability to do everything from addition to subtraction to division multiplication and also comparison operators with like greater than less than greater than or equal to less than or equal to so let's actually go ahead and see what that looks like within python all right so we can again use our comments to specify what we're going to be doing some math let's just say let's do some math some math and we're gonna and we're actually gonna do this math with some print statements so let's do print uh let's start with add, add, addition and then we'll go on and on so let's do one plus two uh, let's do three let's do print three minus two let's print two times five let's print ten divided by two uh let's also print some op operators like uh is four greater than two and that back in there and let's also print is two let's also print four less than two and let's so print something like this let's do three greater than or equal to five and finally let's print seven less than or equal to four boom so we have our first operation here which is going to be adding one and two next one's going to be subtracting two from three the next one's going to be multiplying two and five the next one is going to be dividing ten by two the next one is going to be four greater than two and then four less than two and then three greater than or equal to five and then finally seven less than or equal to four let's go ahead run these and boom we have a bunch of numbers here and also values now for a second there we saw true and false well these are called boolean values 
true and force boolean values and in a second i'll actually show you something really cool about boolean values because boolean values essentially represent the basics of computer science and numbers they're basically one and zero but first let's go back into what we're originally doing so as we can see here we have one plus two which is three we have three minus two which is one we have ten divided by two which is five we have two times five which is ten then we have four greater than two which is saying true which it is true four less than two is false because four is greater than two next we have three greater than or equal to five 3 is not greater than or equal to 5, so that is false. And next we have 7 less than or equal to 4. 7 is not less than or equal to 4, so that is false. Now, let's actually validate what we mean by true and false being 1 and 0. So if I go ahead and actually, I'm just going to make this another cell just because. Um, and, and then we'll just say print true plus true. And you can see here, I'm just printing true plus true, right? And then let's also print. And what we see here is true plus true equals 2, which is very interesting. Now let's print false plus false. And then let's also print true plus false. Boom. So essentially, if true plus true equals two, then true must be one and true must be one, which will give us two. Next, if we print false plus false and it gives us zero, false must be zero and false must also be zero, which is also going to be zero. And finally, if we print true plus false and this gives us one, then one of these values has to be one and the other value has to be zero. And true is one, which we know from here, and false is zero, which we know from here. So hence, we have one here. I thought that was pretty cool because basically with computers, they communicate in ones and zeros. And essentially, those ones and zeros just mean true and false. Very interesting, right? Yeah, I thought so. All right. All of that fun stuff aside, let's go ahead and do a little bit with, with variables. So essentially in Python, a variable is a, is a value store. You, you can store whatever value you want within a variable. Um, in this case, we're going to be storing strings within a variable. So let's specify some strings and some variables. So first, let's say um, my name, and I'm just going to put day, my age, and I'm just going to put 21, and I'm just going to put, and I'm just going to say my weight, and I'm just going to say 170 pounds. Boom. Now, I, I can try to run this but nothing runs right because i mean i'm just storing a value i'm not i haven't told python to print this yet so if i do want python to print any of these values i have to use that print statement i just, if i run this very if i just you know try to run it there's nothing nothing's gonna happen python just basically stores this value in its memories but it doesn't do anything with it if i really want to do anything with them i have to call them and i'm going to call them in this case uh, using a print function which is you know what we've used earlier on so if i say print now since i've already stored day as a value within my name then you know i can just tell python to print my name and boom python already stored the value of day within my name and i can just tell python to print that and it, it prints the value that's stored within the variable and we can do the same thing for of course my age and also you can just say python to print my weight and boom right so python can pretty much print all of these things now remember when we did addition and all those things and we also are talking about strings and variables here well we can combine those two things together to tell python to print this into something like a sentence with these values right so let's say you want python to print a sentence from this we can tell python to print um my name is and we can essentially just concatenate the value of the day variable into this particular statement so we just say my name is and just say plus my name which is going to be day and then and just say and my age is put my age there and actually just going to put some space after these and then finally just say plus a uh, period and just be like i also weigh and just add my weight my weight and then close that run that uh looks like that i missed something up here looks like this is supposed to be my weight and boom now obviously we have have some typos here but given this it's probably not the best way to tell python to print these different things but i just wanted to show like the possibility of being able to combine you know this arithmetic operation and strings together within a print statement um obviously like you know i have a couple of uh typos here which i, I could actually fix them so let's fix that and also let's go ahead and we can just fix this i actually didn't add my age so i'm just gonna put my age here is my age and I forgot to add a plus there. And I put space in between that. And my put some space there. And boom, it looks a lot better. Now, obviously, this is like not the most efficient way to join it, but I just wanted to kind of like prove a point of like using addition and then combining that with strings. If you want to do this a much better and efficient way, we use something called a f string. Now, f string essentially allows us to concatenate these variables within uh, a string without using this plus. So let's go ahead and try that. Now, with the f string, we could tell Python to 
print you have to start the string with an f right and just be like f my name is now instead of just using a plus in this case we could just put curly braces and just put my name right and my age is and also put this in curly braces my age these variables here remember and then just put a period here and i also weigh and just put my weight there my weight boom and we actually have to close that string with our close quotes which we opened right here and then close that bracket and boom we have the exact same results except my typo here again <laughs> and yeah there we go this is a lot more efficient in my own opinion compared to using all these pluses and all of that and this is exactly uh the ease of use with you know python now we've gone over some variables we've gone over some strings we've gone over our arithmetic operations but in the last thing we went over which we used variables and strings and all those things we saw that we had to like hard code these variables into the code basically say my name is day my age is 21 uh, and i weigh 170 pounds but what if that's not always the case we don't always want to have to go back into the code to always change those values what if we can actually solicit user input so that that value could basically be whatever it is for the user not just for day not just for whatever it is that might be within you know the code itself so in this case we're actually going to be going over how to solicit input or prompt users to give us inputs that would go into our code and be used as a value within that code and that value will be stored within a variable which we can then also eventually surface as a string let's go ahead and do that now here we're actually going to do the same thing but we're going to do it in a different way we're going to specify three variables the first variable is going to be my name and we'll just say equals and then we're going to do my age actually let's just you know make this a lot simpler for our for ourselves so just be like my name and take that out and then we're just going to do weight equals that now in order for us to actually solicit user input we're going to use the input function which will be input input and then within input we're going to open a bracket and then we're going to ask the user for something we don't just want to allow the user to put something in there we want to let the user know what they're actually trying to tell us or what they should tell us so we're going to actually specify another string here and just going to be like what is your name boom now before we actually go ahead and do anything else let me actually just comment these out and run that just to see what results we get now as we can see here when we ran this it showed us the string within the input prompt we also have a place where we can actually put our value so we can put in a uh, day and boom it stores that value and traverses it as part of that string it's pretty cool and we can also do the same thing right here uh input how old are you and then also do the same thing right here input how much do you weigh and close that and we can run this and what is your name day how old are you 21 how much do you weigh 170 pounds boom and there we go that's how we can ask users for input but it just doesn't stop there we can actually push this a step further you see we just basically just use these values stored as variables and surface them with the string but we can actually still use these values within these variables that we got it from the user within another string that doesn't have to be associated with the variable itself that sounds a lot confusing but let's go over it real quick now i have all of these stuff going on let's actually see what we can do with all these values because this these are still essentially variables and as you can see here we use these variables in here but this this time we didn't actually solicit user input let's actually use the variables that are given to us by the user and put them into a final string so we're just going to paste this here and in this case we're just going to change this back to name which is what we have here change this back to h which is what we have here and we change this back to weight, which is what we have here. And let's run this again. So what is your name? I'm gonna tell it my name is, let me change this up a bit so we know it's different. Day spring, how old are you? I'm gonna say 22, because I turned 22 in a little over 30 days. And then how much do you weigh? I'm gonna say 180 pounds, because I'm trying to bulk up to 180. And then boom, it still gives me these three different strings, but now it allows me to actually use those variables within another string here again. So my name is day spring, I'm 22, and I also weigh 180 pounds. Would have been nice to add a period there but there we go we are able to combine all these different things together within a new print statement from the stored values within that variable that was collected from the user with the input statement that we have right here okay so that's just the tip of the iceberg with what we can do with python and prompting and a bunch of these things but we can even do way more so let's actually go ahead and look at how we can store a value for the prompt we want to have with the user with something really cool and then actually store even more values for the prompts we're going to get from the user within other 
other variables and then use those variables within a string. So just tell Python that this prompt is going to be stored as this value right here. And I'm just going to make it something like this so that it's looks sort of <laughs> nice, I guess, but we've stored a value for what the prompt is going to be. Now let's go ahead and build something that's very interactive for the user. So let's start by saying print and be like, hi, what is your name? And here, what is your name? And then we're just going to prompt the user for something. So we're just going to say name equals input. Again, we're using that input function, which we used earlier on, but within the inputs, remember that we use this particular string to surface what we want to ask the user for. But in this case, we just want to, you know, use this string here and here we just want to surface surface what is within this prompt variable here. So I just say prompt and whatever the user answers, we're going to store it within this name variable right here. All right. So print, what is your name? And then name prompt. All right. Now what we're going to do next is we're going to use this variable, the value within this variable as a value within the next string. So let's gonna, so let's do this. We're going to say print hi, it's like hi, hi. And then actually in this case, we're going to use an F string. So hi, and then remember how we use this curly braces. So we'll say hi, day and a comma, how are you doing today? And then those are code there. And then, oops, we cancel that. All right, we're going to continue this. Hi, how are you doing today? Don't worry about this. And we just say uh, feeling equals input and prompt. And we're going to store whatever the user answers within this feeling variable. And then next we say, okay, uh, again, an F string here, like, okay. And then we're going to again, use the name variable and we're like, okay, whatever the user passes the name, where do you live? I'm going to say uh, a lives variable here and then again ask the user for some answers and this will all make sense in a second and then again use the prompt variable right here and then finally let's ask them uh what kind of computer do you have so let's say print again an f string here and let's say again an f string here and let's say okay name that lives in whatever the user passed in here here what computer do you have and let's close this up and then finally put computer and store that value as whatever the user tells us and then Finally, we're going to do something called a multi-line string right here. And I'll go over what that means in a second. So with the multi-line string, we can basically use the print statement uh, with multiple lines. So we can just combine that with a F string. And in order to use a multi-line multi -line statement, we have to use uh, three quotes. So one, two, three, and then we'll just go to the next line. And Python will still keep, you know, whatever we're, we're writing within this string that we're writing right here. So let's accumulate all of this information together. So we're going to be like, all right, so your name is name, whatever they passed in the name variable here and your feeling let's put whatever they passed in the feeling variable here today and then let's and then let's go to another line you also said that you live in whatever they passed in the lives variable and are using a whatever they passed in the computer variable computer and then of course we have to close this using uh the same three quotes that we had for our multi-line string so let's do one two three and close it up and let's go ahead and run this okay so i'm just gonna, gonna go ahead and cancel whatever i was trying to do here all right so let's go ahead and run this. All right. So here, the first question is asking is, hi, what is your name? And we can see that it's showing what we put in as the value for the prompt right here. So whenever the user is going to ask, answer a question, they're going to see this nice, you know, format here just to like, you know, show them they're going to put their, their input somewhere, you know, in this block. So let's go ahead and put our name, um, day. So next it uses that same variable that we put in right here within day, which we specify within the string to ask us how we're feeling today. So it says, hi day, how are you doing today? Uh, I'm going to put good. Boom. Okay. It's stores that but we're not using the feeling variable yet so it goes up to the next question which is where do you live i'm just going to be like texas all right now it uses the name variable and the lives variable right so it says okay day right that live it should be lives <laughs> i lives in texas it calls the lives variable here what computer do you have i'm going to say uh mac and then boom it then finally uses the multi-line string which we had at the bottom here to put all of these variables together we had four variables in total name feeling lives and computer and then it puts it together and and turns that into all right so your name is day which is the name variable here and you're feeling good today good is the feeling variable here and you also said that you live in texas which is the lives variable here and are using a computer computer a mac computer which is the computer variable see that's really really cool and this is one of the reasons why i've continued to learn python because it's so cool you can do so much stuff with it and it gets hard sometimes but if you stick with it it actually starts to make sense over time so i'm choosing to stick with it this time and you know really try to figure things out but yeah that's gonna be it for this video i've gone over some really basic 
basic stuff. Um, in the next video, I'll be going over more stuff like, like functions, arguments, how to work with files, and a bunch of other cool things. So keep an eye out for that video. Again, this was not a tutorial. This is just me sharing what I'm learning and how I understand it. So I hope this is valuable in some way to whoever is watching this video. But yeah, thanks for watching this video and be sure to check out any of the videos on the screen right here. And also check out the resources that are going to be linked in the description. Join the Discord, follow me on Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, LinkedIn, wherever the case is. But yeah, again, I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.